And welcome to the castle, everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42. And in today's Roll20 tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to program your tokens. So in the last video, I taught you how to make your own tokens, um, either in Photoshop, GIMP, or um, Roll Advantage. And so today, I'm going to focus on actually, um, actually programming it so that you have relevant stats at your fingertips ready to use. So I'm in my Humblewood campaign here and I've got some of the monsters that I've already programmed, but this guy has not been programmed just yet. This is a wake worm. And so what we need to do is actually configure it that so that it actually takes the information from the character sheet. So I've already gone ahead and made the character sheet for the wake worm, as you can see here. Um, it's got all of its stats as well as its uh, actions that it can take and anything else that is relevant. And so I'm going to go ahead and double click to open up the token editor. And the first thing that we're going to do is probably um, change the representation of the token to the wake worm. Okay. And so now it's got things like AC and HP, but it also fills in the name. And so I can go ahead and show the nameplate or I can just take that away. Now, if you show the nameplate, let's say though, like you're using an NPC and you'll want your PC characters to be able to see that name. Go to advanced and then for name, you're going to give player permissions to see. So now your players can actually see the name of the wake worm. Now, obviously, if you're doing this with monsters, you might want to hide that information until they actually discover what that enemy is. Um, so we have the representation of the character as well as the name of the character. Now let's change our AC and our HP bar because when you click on a token, you get these three lovely buttons that are shortcuts to um, statistics that are represented inside of the character sheet itself but they're actually linked up wrong. So as you can see, this AC is actually showing nothing. The reason is because this wake worm is actually an NPC. So if you just use the statistic for like AC and sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and take, uh... oh, I can't do that because you don't even have a token. Um, let's say though that I have a character, um, and I have, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save that. So let's say I have a actual PC character, which, um, did I do that right? I did not do that right. Okay. So, boop. Oh, well, um, okay, there is. Okay, I did do it right. So, uh, Water Gimunk is this Night Sister token here. So, I'm um, going to go ahead and add that in. And you can see that everything here is not set up. So, if I put this as to AC, um, this isn't going to show anything because the AC, this character sheet, is actually isn't built yet. So, um, use character mancer. Opt out, and then I'm actually going to just enter the information myself. So let's say the the AC is 20. So now it's going to pull that information from the character sheet directly into the token itself. So when I have the AC set to whatever I have the AC set inside of the character sheet is going to change it. Vice versa, though, if you change it here. It will also change it inside of the character sheet. So just be cautious of that. They are both linked. So if you change it in one, it's going to change it in the other. Something to make note of. Okay, so get rid of because I don't need you anymore. You're useless. And get rid of the character sheet. Okay, so we're talking about the NPC. Why is that relevant? Because the AC is only linked to PC characters. This wake worm, by, by definition, the way that I set it up is an NPC. So we need to use the NPC stats. So if I scroll down here, 
it's going to have NPC and the stat that's relevant. So if I go to NPC AC, boom, now it's all of a sudden changed to 16 because the wake worms uh, AC, as I've said, it is 16. Now, let's say that I'm going to use HP. I need to use NPC HP, um, which is up here, even further, even further. There we go. Am I being absolutely stupid? I could have sworn there was actual NPC HP, not the formula. Okay, so quick question. What did I do here? Oh, it's not even set. Look at that. Interesting. Interesting that. No, I do not want that. So something must have changed because I'm pretty sure that I would have also have done that. So we cannot use HP. So what I would do then is in the actual character sheet itself, go ahead and change the hit points because it'll give you the formula. So the hit points is going to be, um, for this creature, it's going to be, whoops, 136 is the suggested hit points. So if we click on that, no, don't give me the freaking, okay. Just stop, please. <laughs> and now if we link that up to HP, there we go. So make sure that you set your HP first. Um, also probably gonna go ahead and add that in, so that way it's counting down, just like in traditional Dungeons and Dragons style. Um, so I only use AC and hit points for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, if there were any other relevant stats, I would probably put that in under the last circle. Um, but that's pretty much all there is. If that if you're only looking for stats, then that would be the best startup. Now there's other things that you can mess around with, like let's say that your creature, you wanna specifically make a creature stand out for some reason, you can give it an aura. So maybe like one square. And now maybe this guy is the leader or something, or that there's something, like there's an aura, like he's super stinky or something, or he's got fire coming all around him. And so if you enter that range, you're gonna get burned. That may or may not be a hint for my future players, by the way. Um, you could add in an aura. You could add in two different auras. Um, if you don't want an aura, then just leave it blank. Um, so you could play around with that so your players can see the aura, or you could just have it so where the GM sees it. Um, you could even decide whether the bar is going above the or below, and for now, I the only bar that is visible is the uh, HP bar. Um, let's say, though, that I want my players to see how many hit points it has for some odd reason, then under player permissions, you can also go ahead and set that. Um, just make sure that you know which bar you're using. So this one's going to be bar three, so I want bar three to be seen by my players. So now they can tally up however many hit points it has. Um, I wouldn't use that per se, but let's say it, it's relevant in your game, then yeah. Um, so this emits light and advanced fog of war is kind of irrelevant now because of the whole dynamic, dynamic lighting system. Um, if you are interested in using the old way, then definitely look up some videos because um, dynamic lighting overall has some issues that they're still trying to work out. And I think that's why this is still here. But for dynamic lighting, um, a thing that you want to remember, and I'll go over this again in my dynamic lighting video, is that if you're in an area where you're, or if you're on a map that you're utilizing dynamic lighting, then you're going to want to make sure that your tokens have vision. Um, even if they do not emit a light of any source, 
they can still see other sources of light. So you want to make sure that they at least have that vision. Um, if they have night vision, like if they're an elf, then yeah, you'll go ahead and turn that on. And I think it's like, what, 60 feet of night vision. Or if they are, um, if they emit a bright light, let's say they're a fire aspect or something like that, and they emit a bright light, you can have that set and that they can, the players can see it as long as they have the vision turned on, by the way. Um, low light vision after a certain number of feet. So this gets tagged onto your um, night vision if you have that. Or if you're in a uh, dimly lit cave and you're a human, then you would use low light. And this tells you the total um, number of feet it, that, that that specific token has of light. So they can see this many feet in whichever map that you're using that. So in my dynamic lighting video, I'll actually go ahead and show you what all of these mean because they each mean something different. Um, and I'll show you some examples of what I've done in other games. So um, that's just a quick little blurb about dynamic lighting. But for now, as a basic necessity, um, set up your NPC AC and then set up the HP or at least link it up to the enemy or the, the NPC that you have. So um, as a quick little side note, gosh, why do I keep right clicking? Let's say that I have a character and I'm just going to go ahead and save that. Um, go to character sheet, create an NPC. I'm just going to fill out some, a couple things. Um, mainly, um, just that much and call it a day. Um, Probably should also change the name of the uh, <laughs> to match up. Okay. So let's take one of our tokens that we have and put it in. Just drag and drop. Go ahead and click on it. Or sorry, double click on it. And put the represents character as whichever NPC that you have. Could show the nameplate if you want. Um, since this has been labeled as an NPC, we'll need to use the NPC AC, and then we'll go ahead and set up the HP just as is. If I could ever find it, there we go. And go ahead and type in the full amount so we can see the bar. And there we go. Just a quick little way of setting up a template. So assuming that you've gone ahead and fleshed out your NPC and just double click, fill in any info that you want to make references to, and there you go, you are set. So as easy as that. Um, feel free to leave some comments down below if you want to know anything more. I am more than happy to elaborate or even redo this entire video, to be honest. Um, but give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series and if you would like to, you are free to um, send this to anybody that you think would really help out because this information is just to help people out. That's why I make these videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. Do all that stuff I just said before because that's my outro and that I always do. And I will see you guys in the next video.